use conditionals to get in and out of loops. Uh, let me see. Three, number four. Okay, now here's a common use for <clears throat> nested loops. Um, let me get rid of this stuff here. So one of the one of the common uses that you can use a nested loop for is when you think of a grid. So here I have on paint, I, I've set it up so that way you can see the grid. And we can see that we have an x-axis going in this direction and a y-axis going in this direction. Now because auto hotkey a lot of the commands are using on the surface, on the mouse and everything like that, we don't really have to worry too much about the y-axis and the x-axis and the order that, that does them. But a lot of other things such as if you're doing uh, programming in C or if you're doing, if you're, let's say, writing something on a document for example right I have to worry about that I do this line first before I do the lines that are below it so it's this line first I'd complete this line and then I go to the next line and complete that well that's how we're going to be setting this up as well so we have a grid and we have positions on it for an x-axis and a y-axis so it's going to come into it it's going to perform our x-axis and then once it's done that line, it's going to jump down to the next line and perform that x-axis. Now let's look at how we go about setting that up. <clears throat> so in this kind of thing in the grid, it's very important where you position your variables. Because if you don't have them positioned in the right place, your values aren't going to be the right values that you want. So we're going to call our outer loop the y-axis. So the outer loop or our main loop is going to be our y-axis. And before we jump into our y-axis, what we're going to do for this program is I'm going to set a variable that I'm going to call y1 to a value of 100. So this is going to be an x and y location on the screen. So this is going to be on the y-axis. So 100 is probably somewhere about here. So I'm going to say that the y variable is equal to 100. And then now that I have that variable declared, I can come into my loop. And this first layer of the loop is going to represent the y axis. <clears throat> now what I need to do is I need to declare my x axis variable. And the reason why it's important that I put my x axis variable right here is because each time after it's done this, it's going to go into another loop, and each time it's gone through however many times I set it to loop, so if I set it to run through 10 times, each time it finishes, so as I'm looping through, it'll go, it'll start here, and then move to there, 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 and then once it's done that loop, it's going to go down to the next line, but I need to reset that x variable back to this beginning position again. Right? So that's very important where I put this the value for that x location because once it's done going across here and then goes down to the next line, I want it to be back over here again to do it again and then do it again. So I'm going to put it right here right before it goes into another loop. And I'm going to set the x location to 50. And then we're going to have our next loop. Now what I need to do is determine how many times I want to loop through it. Now I already did the testing before I wrote while I was writing this. So to make it so that way we don't have any problems with the mouse moving off our screen, I think this the settings that I'll, I'll give you will probably be okay for you. So we're going to have our outer loop or our y-axis run through eight times. And then our inner loop or our x-axis where it's running through the x-axis, we're going to have that run through 15 times. <clears throat> so it'll go 15 spaces in this direction drop down and it'll drop end up dropping down eight times now that we have that out of the way what we're going to do is we're going to use the mouse move command we're not going to use clicks so that way you don't have to worry about clicks uh click uh clicking something you don't want it to so we're just going to use mouse move so that way we can actually see what's going on and then we're going to type in our variables x1 and y1 and do i need a speed i think if I change the speed it'll be too slow so I'm gonna leave it like that so now that we've done so it's gonna come into this loop and the first time it's gonna move our mouse to the current location of x1 
So this is our x-axis and y1, which is this one right here. It's going to move to that. So let's say it's right here. And then immediately after it's moved there, what we're going to do is we're going to take that x variable and we're going to move it to the next position. So let's say we moved it to this grid right here. The next position over, we're going to move it that many pixels over to go there. And then again and again. So for our example, what we're going to do is we're going to take our x1 variable and we're going to add 50 to its current value. Once it's done moving it 15 times, what we want it to do now is we want it to drop down to the new y-axis. So what we're going to do is as soon as it comes out of this loop here, immediately afterwards, we're going to type in y1 plus equals 50. So how it's going to work is it's going to come in, it's going to set the value of our x variable to a position of 50. So that way it's right along this border right here. It's going to come into this loop here, move our cursor there, and then it's going to change the position of the x location variable. So that way when it runs through the loop again, it'll move it 50 pixels over. And it'll do that 15 times. And then once it's done that, it's going to change the value of our y variable by 50 pixels. So it'll drop our thing down and then it'll run through that program again. Drop down, through again. Okay, so let's just have a look at what we have. Uh, let me add a return. So now when I run this, uh, do I want it this a uh, hotkey? Nah, I'll just run it. Okay, so as soon as I hit this, it's going to move my cursor over here and then it's going to start doing that grid. Okay, and there we go. Now, we, like I said, we could do that with clicks and that. Um, in fact, when I was planning this, I had created a program that uh, actually did like a thousand clicks or something like that. But I, I created a grid pretty much about the same size as this, and it went through each grid and clicked in each position. So it would click all the way across each one of these boxes, drop down to the next line, and it would do it would click all of this grid within like a fraction of a second. But anyways, I decided not to do that, so we have that. So there's there's how we can do grid with an x and a y axis. And inside of here, what we can do is we can set conditions. So we can say if the value of um, let's say if x1 does not equal 100. So if x1 does not equal 100, then we're going to add to it. So this time we're going to exclude when x1 equals 100. And we can also do it, do it only when x1 equals that, or so on and so forth. So we can set conditions inside of here. Like we can name, we can create a variable here that we'll call. Um, We'll call this variable rows, and then each time it runs through this, we'll say rows plus plus, right? And then we can have a condition that says if rows equals this, or if it does not equal that, then only then do you click, or only then do you not click. But anyways, that's how we can use that as a grid. Um,